represent the best Russia has to offer. Three-time world champion Alexei Yagudin is their leader. But 18-year-old Yevgeny Plushenko says that this will be his year atop the world podium. Irina Slitskaya is the challenger to Michelle Kwan's reign as world champion, and she can't wait any longer to dethrone the champion. She was followed closely by the 1999 world champion Maria Buterskaya. Her days in the spotlight are far from over. Two-time world pair champions Elena Berezhnaya and Anton Sikorlidze continue to dominate. Tonight in Tokyo, we will see why this Russian skating power is collectively the best in the world. When the sun rose over the opening ceremony to the 1998 Olympic Games in Nagano, it marked a return of sorts for Midori Ito. Throughout her career, Midori would rise to the top of figure skating's highest peak. Only to fall from grace in her country's eyes. It was considered a failure when she won a silver medal at the 1992 Winter Olympics. Along with the best from Russia, Midori Ito returns to competition. Tonight, the Athlat Japan Open from Yoyogi National Stadium in Tokyo, Japan. Hello everybody, I'm Tracy Wilson. This is the third in a series of three open competitions which allow the Olympic eligible skaters to compete against the professionals. We have a collection of some of the finest skaters in the world in all four of the disciplines and highlighting the field, Russia's best in the men, the ladies, and the pairs. Now, as is customary in an open competition, we will bring you first the Olympic style short program tonight and then one week from tonight, it's the interpretive free skate. I am joined by two Olympic silver medalists, Rosalind Sumner and Paul Wiley. And Paul Wiley, let's look at the men's competition. It's a very strong field, led by the three-time and current world champion, Alexei Yagudin of Russia. Do you think anybody's going to catch him here? He is so tough to beat, you know, because he can actually put together not just the choreography and the great skating, but also the quad-triple combinations to back that up. He's a world champion three times for a good reason, but his countryman and Russian national champion Evgeny Yaklushenko is hungry to upset Alexei every time they meet. No one can touch his technical ability with quad, triple, double combinations and unmatched consistency. There's no love lost between these two former training partners, especially as they get nearer to Salt Lake City. Well, Paul, you talked about a Russian rivalry in the men's competition. We also have a Russian rivalry in the ladies' rods with Maria Buterskaya and Irina Slutskaya. Oh, Tracy, it's so exciting. Never before have we seen a great rivalry between two Russian ladies. This one's been developing and heating up over the past years, and now Maria Buterskaya and Irina Slutskaya are dominating the podium at Worlds. They are raising the level of the sport, and they are the two that are battling with Michelle Kwan for gold in Salt Lake City. The tension between these two Russian skaters, but they're also looking over their shoulder at a Japanese national treasure in Midori Ito. Midori Ito now skates as a professional. She was a world champion in 1989, Olympic silver medalist in 1992, the first lady ever to land a triple axel in competition, and incidentally, she's the last lady to do a triple axel in competition. Rosalind, she's going to be tough to beat. Boy, Tracy, every eye was on Midori Ito in practices. She, she has not missed a beat technically. At 31 years old, five years after her last competition, she is just as strong and competitive technically as the rest of the ladies out here. For more on Midori, let's join our colleague, Dee Lynham. Well, what a compelling storyline that a 31-year-old Midori Ito is here to compete. Here's a skater who so captivated audiences back in her skating prime with her power and athleticism, but then abruptly left the international skating scene about five years ago. Where has she been? Midori Ito has spent time as a Japanese TV commentator. She's helped advise young and up-and-coming Japanese skaters. And she even helped start a women's labor union here in her home country, all in addition to being part of a Japanese touring ice show. The Midori Ito that will skate today is a mature woman who skates with purpose and passion. 
But now it's time for the pair's short program. And first on the ice, from the United States, here are Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman. And they will skate to music from The Truman Show. with required deductions. Difficulty is rewarded. They start off this program with a side-by-side -side jump, side-by-side -side triple toe loops. Nicely done. Double twist. Watch the height and the landing. Nice and soft. The next, a risky move. A throw triple jump. Throw triple salco. Oh, she stepped out of that a little bit. That's a mandatory deduction. That's a two-tenths deduction. Now a side-by-side -side camel, change camel. They're a little bit off here. Very important to be absolutely together to skate as one. Here at the lift move, watch the innovative positions. death spiral. And the eighth and final element is a pair spin combination. when we come back. Japan Open on TNT is brought to you by Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. And by Pearl Vision. Nobody cares for eyes more than Pearl. Call 1-800-YES-EYES for the location nearest you. program is worth one-third of the total score, two sets of marks, the first for required elements. Tracy, they really took the deductions, both in the throw, I think, and the side-by-side -side spins. Um, I think they're drum up a little bit on the uh, artistic mark. 
but they uh, definitely were penalizing them for those mistakes and for some general sloppiness. And on the ice now, the two-time world and Russian national champions. Here are Elena Berezhnaya and Anton Sikorlidze. Triple toes, their opening move. He missed it. Even with the mistakes that they make in some of their competitions, they're considered the team to beat. Here, split double twist. Look at that height. for this throw triple loop. Beautiful, beautiful landing on that. Paul, is there a team in the world that skates with as much speed as these two? No, I don't think so. Maybe the Chinese, but the command that they have on the ice, along with the unison, make them the team to beat, I think. exit. She swings down. The back outside death spiral here. They've changed their technique on this a bit. She's getting lower than she was last year. Very good. World Championships when Elena failed a drug test. She took an over-the-counter cough syrup. They are trying to regain their form so they can win their title back, but they look a little tentative in this short program. Here's the throw triple loop. She gets a great landing on this. She's had some serious problems with throws this season. And here's their lift, a back press. Now watch as she swings down in the exit. This is a very innovative lift designed by Tamara Moscovina, their coach. Watch her swing down and back, not to be attempted at home. Five, six, five, six, so a couple of mistakes for five, Elena and Anton, and you see these marks quite low. Five sixes and one five five. Second set of marks for presentation. They go up to five eight. I think that shows the potential of this program, but they remember they missed the side-by-side -side triple toes and also some unison difficulties on their spins. But enough for first place at this point in the competition. And now on the ice, the final competitors in the pairs event. They are from France, the world bronze medalist, Sarah Abbott-Bowl and Stéphane Bernadis, and they will skate to Ninja.
They open with the side-by-side -side triple toe loops. Now watch how far they are apart from each other. That makes it less difficult. Oh, off badly in the air, he falls. Year at the world's in Nice, they became the first French team in 64 years to win a medal. They hope to repeat that this year. Split double twist. Nice height there. Their life has been quite a whirlwind since their bronze medal performance at last year's Worlds. I'm not sure they've devoted as much time to training as they might have. Here, a throw triple loop jump. Now that was nice. She's very spunky on the ice. I think this ninja program plays very well here in the local audience in Japan. national title back in 1994 but the federation did not send them to the olympic games saying they showed no potential well stefan has said that it has been his pleasure proving his federation <laughs> wrong sure here's a split double twist look at the separation between them there great height catches her very nicely Judges now ready with the marks for Abbott Ball and Bernadies, and these range from 5.1 to 5.5. Yeah, I think the judges were a little bit confused as to how much to take off, especially given the fact that they had a fall, but then other things which were a little bit sloppier. These, uh, the, uh, the artistic marks go up, but you can see they don't go up to the same level that Sikorilitsa and Beresnaya do. But those marks are good enough for second place. Elena Berezhnaya and Anton Sikerlidze of Russia, the winners of the pair's short program, ahead of Sarah Abbott Ball and Stefan Bernadis of France, Americans Kyoko Ina and John Zimmerman finish third. When we come back, world champion Alexei Agudin of Russia takes on the current Russian champion, Yevgeny Plashenko. The rivalry continues. Welcome back to the AFLAC Japan Open and the arena which has staged this unique event over the past four years, Yoyogi National Stadium. This open competition is a popular event for the people of Tokyo and this year is special. The return of Midori Ito to competitive skating. Can you find the price of a hot dog on this menu? Everyone is waiting for Midori Ito. But right now, the men are warming up for their short program. Let's take a look at the skating order. American Todd Eldridge will skate first, ahead of Alexei Yagudin. Yevgeny Plushenko will skate fourth. This season, Yevgeny Plushenko has won every competition he's entered, but a world title continues to elude him. Last year at the Worlds, he finished a disappointing fourth. He vows to never let that happen again. I won't think about uh, skates, not about uh, medal. 
because last year I did uh, so good uh, season. I win everything in European, but I lost uh, World Championships. And because when I left on ice, I think about medal, not about gems. And uh, I lose everything. Well, he felt last year he wanted to win too badly and uh, ended up finishing in fourth. He's got his game face on now for this competition as he focuses in on his skating. First on the ice now for the men's short program from the United States, here is Todd Eldridge. And he will skate to music from the 1492 soundtrack by Vangelis. he's disappointed but now he must go and finish the other seven elements program is a reworked exhibition program, somewhat experimental at this point. I think it suits him well. It does. This is triple axle jump. Struggle to hold on to that. when we come back after this. Yogi National Stadium, Todd Eldridge of the United States waits for his scores along with his coach, Richard Callahan. Here's his quad toe. Just almost doesn't have... He gets great height in the air. It's just, oh, to see his foot on the bottom. As he lands it, his foot curls around and he doesn't get a flat edge. Okay, now here, as he reaches back on the triple lutz, watch his toe. His toe slips and he, he's obviously injured his left foot there. And now 
the marks for, for Todd Eldridge, and as expected, a low first set of marks. Tracy's got so many deductions to worry about here, uh, but just the five fives and the uh, the artistic impression marks really go up, though. The five five that shows you what could have been. Next skater on the ice for the men's short program, the three-time and current world champion of Russia. Here is Alexei Yagudin. His music is Chopin's Revolution Etude. of the program. I think that makes him unique. Alexei Yagudin of Russia. He has won just about every competition, three-time world champion. The only competition he's never won is his national title. There's his quad that he turns into a double. Honestly, I don't know. He just, it's a split second decision that you make. He probably didn't feel like he waited long enough. And um, that's gonna be very costly. Here's his triple axle though. Look at the position in the air. So nice and tight with his legs. So secure looking. And Alexei Agudin also gunning for a win at the Olympic Games in Salt Lake City. He has yet to win an Olympic medal. He'll need his quad for that. And you can see the low set of first marks, second set of marks go up nicely. I'm sure that's about the first 5-3 he's seen in a few years. I were backstage with Todd Eldridge, and Todd, we saw you grimace in some pain. Can you just explain what happened and when it happened in your routine? Um, actually, when I picked in for the uh, Triple Lutz, um, whatever the way the ice was when I picked in it slid so when it slides you're in a lot of trouble and when it slid my other foot slid in and, and kicked my toe so I put my blade into my toe and got a cut on it so we'll see uh, you know when we uh, get a chance to look at it a little bit better and, and kind of assess what what actually happened to it uh, you know we get through this event and and uh, get back and get home and take care of it do you anticipate you can skate in the long yeah, I think we'll skate. Um, 
you know, if, if I have to take out a triple lutz, then I'll take out a triple lutz. But, uh, you know, it's we'll get out there and we'll get through it. The show must go on, I guess. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Sure. A warm response from the audience for this hometown favorite. Here is a four-time Japanese champion, Takeshi Honda. He will skate to the music of Don Quixote. performance by Takeshi Honda of Japan. We'll have his scores when we come back. Five, and three, now the marks five, for Takeshi four, Honda. Five, Those were required two, elements. 5.0 up to 5.5. Five, 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 Remember, they take off a full four tenths for the triple S turn into a double. And a better set of marks for presentation up to a 5.9. And on the ice now at only 18 years of age, he is a two-time national champion, world silver medalist, Evgeny Plashenko of Russia. His music, Bolero. triple toe as well oh and he misses this is unreal paul what can you attribute these mistakes to is it i mean they were doing it in practice is it pressure jet lag it could be jet lag it could be just that we're getting that much closer to the world championships and the olympic games i'm not sure these are difficult elements watch triple axle Oh, double axle. 
Okay. Just a great reminder that none of these performers are actually machines, you know? They're affected by things like jet lag, by so many consistent programs in a row. It's time for them maybe to take a break. of Russia, and he knows he's done that a whole lot better. Quad toe. Watch in the air. He gets plenty of height. He just doesn't seem to land on an edge. He's completely, again, folded over. His, his skate folded over, almost like Todd Eldridge's mistake as well. Triple axle. Turns it into a double. Costly, costly error. Mark three of Genny Plashenko. Okay, they took the deductions on the technical mark, but then these artistic marks come up all the way to a 5.9. I'm not sure I agree with that. Second set of marks for presentation. Very high. 5.6 up to 5.9. And you're right, Evgeny Plashenko of Russia is in second place behind Alexei Yagut. Final competitor in the men's short program, the 1994 Olympic champion, was devastated by a serious groin injury in 1997, is now a professional in his second year. Here is Alexei Yermanov, and he will skate to Georgian Variations. <laughs> is the only competitor not trying a quadruple. He is doing a triple axle combination. His base mark will not be as high as the other performers. But if he skates clean, he still might score. Triple axle. Up, and he flips out of that. triple flip. It takes a long time. It's supposed to be immediately preceding. Very good triple flip. Death drop. Very good spin.
a double axle. Not the same difficulty of these elements, Tracy. So I think he's on a different plane than the other four performers in this competition. for Olympic champion Alexei Ermanov of Russia, now splitting his time between coaching and performing. Triple axle combination. He gets pretty good height, but the landing just can't hold on to it. Turns it, steps out of it. There's the double toe loop. And now the first set of scores for Alexei Ermanov, 4.8 up to 5.2. Those reflecting a lower level base mark that they took the deductions from. Very high set of second scores. These for presentation, 5.4 up to 5.7. And those marks good enough to move Alexei Ermanov into fourth place. So the final standings for the men's short program. The current world champion, Alexei Yagudin of Russia, is in first. Ahead of Yevgeny Plashenko, Takeshi Honda of Japan finishes third. Todd Eldridge of the United States is in fifth. Now let's go backstage and join D Lineham. All right, we're with Alexia Gooden, who feels fortunate to be atop the uh, men's standings after this short. But just explain what you think happened with everybody out there. You know, it was amazing because nobody's getting clean in these guys. And, like, I did last mistake, so I won the short program. But I was so excited to see, like, never I saw such a bad skating as I saw today. The quad for you, sometimes is there no problem, sometimes not recently. And what, how do you explain, or you can't explain why sometimes? Well, that's life, you never know what will happen. Like, uh, for example, today I felt really good before going in the short program, and I was doing quad like yesterday in the practices and today at the warm up. So, and I didn't expect that I will miss it, but sometimes you don't do it, and then you just do it so easily at the short or free program. So it's just. It's life, and you never know what will happen. Thank you. Good luck. Even on a bad day, Alexei Yagudin's in first. When we come back, the fast-rising Italians, Barbara Fusarpoli and Maurizio Margaglio. Welcome back to Tokyo in the Aflac Japan Open. Each year, the Imperial Palace, where Emperor Akito lives, is open to the public only twice. On this particular occasion, thousands walked across the moat surrounding the Imperial grounds to catch a glimpse of the 125th Emperor of Japan. It is a festive atmosphere and we are told an event every citizen should experience once in their lifetime. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. In what year did ice dancing become an Olympic sport? We'll have the answer for you a little later. Welcome back to Yoyogi National Stadium. I'm Tracy Wilson, along with Rosalind Sumners, and the dancers are now on the ice warming up for their original dance. We'll see three teams compete. All three are from the Olympic eligible ranks and highlighting the field the italians barbara fusarpoli and maurizio margaglio in 1998 at the nagano olympics they finished in sixth place but then have made a meteoric rise up the world standings in ice dance they finished in second place at the 2000 world championships they are a fast and fiery team and they want it all. They want to win worlds. Their preparation has been intense, and it matches their fiery Italian temperament. Every day we are working like crazy. 
so seven hour a day, five hour days on the ice, so of course everything can happen because judges, you know, in ice dancing it's not how you skate on the ice, but everything outside, like judges, costumes, everything. I know it's not easy because it's first time for Italy, not for Barbara and Maurizio, you know, for Italy. And now in Italy, everybody's like crazy. Like in a federation, everybody, all the people is nervous. Like, how are you? How is your practice? Every day is okay? How is your custom? How is new custom? I said, quiet. We skating, we practice, you know, but it's for everybody, it's changing something. They understand now it's possible to be first in European or world, so they are crazy, absolutely. They both have engaging personalities, and I think it's their aggressiveness that is going to allow them to contend for a gold medal, both at the World Championships coming up and perhaps also at Salt Lake City. Now, Rosin, the original dance is worth 50% of the total score here. Uh, there are some required elements. What are the judges looking for? Well, Tracy, the key ones to look for in this original dance, they have two footwork sequences, one straight line, which is parallel. The partners cannot touch. The second footwork sequence is a diagonal line in a dance hold. There are also two dance lifts and one dance spin. First on the ice with their original dance, a four-time world bronze medalist from Canada, Shailen Bourne and Victor Kraft. See how strong they are on their own. they were connecting. Shailen Bourne and Victor Kratz of Canada. We'll see their scores when we come back. We welcome you back to the AFLAC Japan Open. The ladies will be on the ice shortly, and backstage, Evgeny Plushenko is giving some last-minute encouragement to Irina Slutskaya. 
Irina is a little under the weather with the flu, so we will see if it affects her performance. It has been five years since Midori Ito has been warming up for a competition. Perhaps she has some butterflies. But time now for the Aflac Trivia Answer. In what year did ice dancing become an Olympic medal sport? The year 1976 in Innsbruck, Austria. Takamova and Gorshkov won the gold medal. And now the marks from the judges. Two sets of marks. A first set here for the original dance for composition. Five fives and two five fours. And now the second set of marks are for presentation. And remember, this original dance is worth 50% of the total score. Here are Margarita Drobiasco and Pavlos Vanagas of Lithuania. And for their original dance, they will skate to Charleston and then a quick step. mentioned Ross good speed When they won the bronze medal at the World Championships in 2000, they became the first Lithuanian skaters to win a medal in any discipline. And here's the Ferg. Now watch again. Watch how difficult his movements are. A lot of control here. A lot of one foot skating as opposed to a lot of two feet happening. An improvement I've noticed with this team this year is Margarita's expression, I think, is more effective. She used to be quite contained in her expression, and now I think she's reaching into the audience with her eyes. I did find this routine a little bit jerky. And now the marks for Margarita and Pavelis, the first set composition, and Roz, these are a little bit higher than Born and Kratz. Five, and the second five, set go up five, quite eight. a bit. Five sevens and five eights. So four first place ordinals and one second for Drobiasco and Vanega. So they are in first place at this point in the competition. But now on the ice, team to be world silver medalist from Italy, Barbara Puzarpoli and Maurizio Margaglio. This is a charming original dance to the music of Putting on the Ritz. Have you seen the wealth 
competition ready so an uncharacteristic mistake there by Mauricio but he has been hampered all year in training by a knee injury it almost took them out of the cup of Russia competition earlier in the season and I think it has limited their training which has shown up in this original dance and here's the diagonal fourth very difficult a lot of speed across the ice very intricate but the mistake came on the straight line footwork where they skate side by side during the twizzle section. Maurizio just got off balance. There was a break in unison, and that's a point one deduction. And now the marks for Barbara and Maurizio. Very strong set, 5.7, then one 5.8. And the deduction does come off that first set. So they would have been even higher than that had they skated it cleanly. The second set, clearly the leaders after the original dance, Barbara Fusacoli and Maurizio Margaglio. Drobiasco and Vanagas from Lithuania finished second in the ice dance. Shailen Bourne and Victor Kratz of Canada third. When we come back, the ladies will take the ice featuring Irina Slutskaya of Russia and the return to competition for Midori Ito of Japan. We welcome you back to the AFLAC Japan Open. For centuries, the Japanese have held the natural order of nature in reverence. Every animal, plant, and human being holds an equal place in the universe. It has been that way for their ancestors and will continue as such for future generations. Yogi National Stadium. 
the site of the swimming and diving competitions of the 1964 Summer Olympic Games, where Donna Deverona of the United States won two Olympic gold medals. Now, the diving boards remain. The pool is underneath the ice and on top of the ice. The ladies are warming up for their short program. I'm Tracy Wilson. I'm joined once again by Rosalind Sumners. And Rosalind, Irina Slutskaya of Russia finished second to Michelle Kwan at the World Championships last year. She's a favorite in this competition. She is, and she's a tough competitor. Now, we've been talking about Irina Slutskaya's technical brilliance. She doesn't have the flash of the other skaters, but when she is on, she has such joy in her skating, and that joy actually brings up her artistic mark, which then creates a whole package for Irina. Maria Butraskaya, what I like about her is her fight and her fire. She's lost her Russian title. She lost her world title to Michelle Kwan, but she is not letting up. She comes out in every competition prepared, tough. She's had very good practices here. She has two well-rounded programs, and she's performed them a lot, so that gives her a real comfort level. And Midori Ito, what a pleasant surprise to see the whole package now from Midori. Their softness, beautiful lines, and now combined with power and speed and the triples. No drop in quality in the last five years. She's happy and it shows on the ice and she's so excited to show people what she can do. At the age of 15, Lu Chen won the first world medal for China, a bronze. Her journey really began many years before that championship night as she struggled for her own sense of freedom under a system which frowns on independent thinking. Here's my colleague, Jim Huber. It is their escape, just as certainly as if they had leaped over a wall and fled into the darkness. When they step onto this ice, they are free. No one can reach them, no one can invade this space. For the graceful Lu Chen, that must be so. If she takes a deep breath now and smiles, you will understand where she must be in her life. For so many years, she carried the weight of the most populated nation on earth onto this ice and knew the ice was her only retreat. A retreat punctuated by one of the most emotional moments in Winter Olympics history in Nagano. Halfway around the world now, she builds another life for herself in Arizona. It is a long way, both in miles and mentality, from the northern Chinese province of Changchun, where Lu Chen grew up. She was a phenom of the First Order, known in those days as Chen Lu. Her Americanization first reversed her name and then simplified it to just Lulu. But while she was winning national championships from a tender age, she was also feeling China's suffocating control. They never have that kind of athlete. So they have to make that rules for me, for myself, <laughs> and, you know, like, say, um, if I, you know, earn money from competition or exhibition, and how much I have to give them back, almost like everything. <laughs> she was also under the tutelage of a coach named Lee Min Shu from 10 years old, and while Lee developed her talents, Lu was growing into a young adult and the clash became ferocious. My coach, she, she never let me grow my hair. That, I hate it. <laughs> I really hate it. Um, I dream about it, like have long hair, but every time and she, you know, make me cut my hair and, you know, do things like whatever she tell me to do. Still, Lu Chen was growing into a world presence, a live, young talent with immense potential. Sixth at the Alberville Olympics, two third-place finishes at the subsequent World Championships, and a bronze at the Lillehammer Games. And then, after an injury, the World Championship in 1995. She had arrived big time. Or had she? For just as patiently as she had risen to the top, she plummeted to near nowhere. And it all had to do with her country and her coach. She finally raised the nerve to part with Lee and quickly fell apart herself. I was overweight and out of shape. And so the month before I started back to train, I have to starve myself. <laughs> I didn't cry like a friend of people. I, I, that time I, I didn't cry. I wasn't cry. I don't want it. But, of course, like, while I'm alone, I'm crying so hard. 
it's like really sad because when you're on top and you're like straight down, it's, it's hard to believe. She moved to California to train after a disappointing finish at the 97 Worlds and was forced to qualify later that year in Austria. But what happened the following winter in Nagano remains one of the great moments in figure skating history. Did it ever cross your mind that something magical was really happening? Everything I've been going through now, that's it. It's over. And, you know, like all the pictures, you know, the hard time and everything just, you know, flashback. She turned professional in the months since Nagano and moved to Scottsdale, Arizona. And she purchased her first home, but it lacks just a little bit. This oh, this is, is really nice. Home. I love what you've uh, <laughs> done with it. Okay, that's the living room and kitchen. And this is where you live. This is where you do all your business, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, that's my excess ball. <laughs> there you go. Exercise ball, TV, <laughs> CDs, and kitchen. Yeah. What more could a woman want? Back home in China, Lu Chen remains a major celebrity and thus can't hardly go anywhere without being mobbed. Here at her new home in Scottsdale, Arizona, she seems to have found the freedom, peace, and quiet that she's longed for most of her life. And if she's in need of a cultural fix, well, that's right down the road, too. Yeah. Do you like catfish? Um, I, I kind of like all kinds of fish. Do you like eel? Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. And you really have barbecue? Uh, have you ever had barbecue? Yeah, okay. yeah barbecued and everything, like, is really good. Eel is really good. Eel is very good. Yeah, I like crab. <laughs> you like the crab? Let's yeah. Here. Those is for, like, a long life noodles. Oh, really? Like, when you have first day, we have to have that noodle. That means you, you know, have long life. How do you say it in Chinese? Chang shou min. Chang Yeah. So that's for a birthday. You can't skate, like, until you're 80 or, you know, you... You get move on. There is so many things to do. Like, I love to sing, I love to dance, you know, I, I, I love to sew. Like, uh, so many things I love to do. You really like pig's feet? Yes. Do you really? Uh-huh. And chicken feet. Maybe that's been Lulu's secret for success, a diet of chicken and pig feet. Take note, all you young skaters. We wish Lulu good luck here, and that luck also applies to Midori Ito and her return to competitive skating. The ladies are on the ice when we return to Tokyo. First on the ice of the ladies' short program, six-time national champion of Russia, the 1999 world champion. Here is Maria Buterskaya. Her music is Sonda Moore, sung by Sarah Brightman. elements in the short program. First of her elements here, the triple lutz. Beautiful combination with the double toe. This program has served her so well so far this season. It's been very consistent. Here's the flip. Struggled with this in practice yesterday a little. Almost like she's not even finishing the rotation, which is very unusual for her. But the one competition she really struggled this year in the short program was the Russian Nationals where she missed every jump. How hard is that on your confidence? <laughs> Pretty much shoots it, but yet.
yet here she is fighting. And that's a real champion. She tends to skate choppy, and yet I'm seeing each year she's really like feeling into her skate a lot smoother than we've seen. Maria Buterskaya, the first Russian lady ever to win the world title. We will be back with the scores for Maria right after this. at Yoyogi National Stadium where Maria Buterskaya of Russia is waiting for her scores. Okay. Beautiful triple lutz. She's so down on her knee on this takeoff. Really tight leg position. Takes her time for the double toe. It's really too bad she didn't keep the momentum from this combination spin going here into this triple flip. She just doesn't finish the rotation. Very unusual for Maria. The point four deduction. And now the marks for Maria Buterskaya. Short program worth one third of the total score. These five twos and five threes. The second set go up significantly. Five sevens and one five eight. Quite low there in the technical merit. They really hammered her for the flip. Okay. Next on the ice, representing China, she was the 1994 Olympic bronze medalist. Repeated that accomplishment at the 1998 Olympics. Here is Lu Chen, and she will skate to take five. Winning the bronze medal at the 1998 Olympics, Lu Chen retired from Olympic eligible competition and now skates as a professional. And she's enjoying her skating more than ever. She doesn't have the difficulty in her jumps that the other ladies have. She's going to open with a triple loop double toe. energy into that takeoff and it just kind of doesn't go anywhere. And Lulu is one to feed on energy when she is skating well. A mistake like that, sometimes those mistakes will carry through the program. A little lazy landing there on the triple toe. turning professional is you really sort of let go the pressure of a short program and it is very difficult to come back and, and, and sort of create that that do or die situation straight line footwork another of the eight 
elements. her home in Arizona where as we saw in the feature a little earlier she's still able to pick up her favorite triple loop never even completed the rotation in the air legs weren't tight enough just sort of a, a lazy attitude to this short program and now the marks for Lu, Lu Chen, these for required elements, 5-2, four twos up to 4.7. Second set of marks for presentation, these range from 5.0 to 5.4, good enough for second place at this point in the competition. But when we come back, Japan's national treasure, Midori Ito. If you come to Tokyo, the Asakusa Shopping Center is the place to be. Every kind of souvenir or trinket can be found for every occasion. You can even buy a porcelain cat for good luck. I wonder if Midori Ito and the others are carrying a cat for good luck. Warming up backstage, Irina Slutskaya of Russia, going through her last-minute mental preparation. She'll be coming up a little later. And now on the ice in her first competition since 1996, here is Midori Ito of Japan. skater Midori was known for her jump first lady to land a triple axel she will not be doing it in this competition but all of her other triples are so easy for her Tracy such ease in practice here's the triple lug she turned it into turn it into a double single now one of the things about Midori is she always succumbed to the pressure this is not the person we saw in practices yesterday she becomes a whole nother person Albertville, France, where Midori Ito was competing against Christy Yamaguchi of the United States. Midori set the house on fire with her practices and slowly came apart as she got closer to the competition. Had problems with her jumps throughout the competition and finished second to Christy Yamaguchi. after that second place finish she really felt like a failure in her country and she spent years now skating in shows and really regaining her love for skating we saw her smiling yesterday in practices like we hadn't seen for a long time don't forget she hasn't done this short program in six years The only 
other lady to land a triple axle in competition was Tanya Harding of the United States. A rather reserved performance by Midori Ito of Japan. Here's the triple lock. Nice edge and then just pops it the minute she gets into the air, turns it into a double, and then turns it into a single. She's allowed to do a double-double, wouldn't get a deduction, but this was just a double single. Again, not the difficulty of the other ladies, and yet here's a nice, beautiful, easy triple toe. Good to come back from a mistake, get that confidence going again. And this double axle, you can really see why that would be a nice triple for her. Wow. And now the marks for Midori Ito. Rosalind, 4.9 all the way up to 5.4. Again, yeah, that combination jump is very important. Presentation. Presentation marks go up. Do you think she's relieved or would you like to do that all again? Oh, the minute you make a mistake, you want to go right back out there and fix it. But what an accomplishment to come back after six years and do a short program. Second place marks for Midori Ito of Japan. championship 12th at the world championships in 2000 yoshia onda of japan she will skate to red by jesse cook Yamada and Rosalind, she also has the same kind of a spring in her jump that Midori does. Is that something you can teach? Not really. You really have to have it in your in your body, in your skating. She also has the artistry at a much younger age, at only 18 years old, that we haven't seen until now with Midori. But you can see a lot of potential in Yoshi. Now 
like she has to be happy with that. I think a little surprised by herself. An ear-to-ear -ear grin on Yoshia Onda from Nagoya, Japan. She really took the time with her jumps. She took her time here on this left. Beautiful leg position in the air, taking the time into the double toe and the triple flip. Perfect rotation, a little leaning in the air, but a wonderful landing. Midori Ito of Japan joining her teammate, Yoshia Onda, and their coach, Machiko Yamada. And now the first set of marks at a great set, 5.2 up to 5.5. You can see how Midori really is being supportive of Yoshia. And now the presentation mark, 5.3 up to 5.5. Yoshia Onda has moved into second place ahead of Midori Ito. Russian national champion Irina Slitskaya is next. And now on the ice, silver medalist to Michelle Kwan at the 2000 World Championships, Russian national champion. Here is Irina Slitskaya skating to the music of culture. She's opening with the triple lutz, double loop, audience is known for being very reserved in their applause. How does that uh, affect the skaters? Well, in the short program, really what you're doing is really concentrating on the elements. It's not as much about pleasing an audience, but you certainly want to feed off their energy. And if it's not there, and if you're feeling a little low, you really have to dig deep. The skaters all tonight just feel a little bit slow. Irina Slutskaya of Russia. This triple left double toe, so easy. Look at the height on this. Into a double loop, different than the other ladies with a double toe on the end of theirs. And here as she goes into the triple flip, she just has a little lack of energy, didn't turn it into a triple. And now the scores for Irina Slutskaya, the first set from 5.6 up to 5.8. 
So the one mistake costly on the first set of marks for Irina. Second set, these go up drastically, 5.7, as high as a 5.9. And so those are first place marks for Irina Lutskaya of Russia in the ladies' short program. She finishes ahead of teammate Maria Buterskaya. Yoshia Onda of Japan finishes in third place ahead of Midori Ito. Lu Chen of China is fifth. When we come back to Tokyo, we'll talk to the leader, Irina Slitskaya. Japan Open on TNT has been brought to you by Progressive Auto Insurance. Not what you would expect from an insurance company. For a competitive quote, call 1-800-AUTO-PRO. By AIM Mutual Funds. Call your financial advisor for a prospectus. And by AFLAC. Without it, no insurance is complete. Backstage with Irina Slutsky, who leads the ladies' field after the short program. And Irina, I know you've been under the weather. Do you feel fortunate to have one skated pretty well and two be leading the field? Um, you know, I'm a little bit sick. It's hard for me, and this long trip, and you know, it's changed the time, and it's so difficult for me. And I feel not so good right now because I'm like so dizzy. You know. Good luck in that long program. Oh, thank you. I will try. Thanks, Dee, and we will bring you the Interpretive 3 program from the AFLAC Japan Open one week from today, beginning at 8 p.m. Eastern, here on TNT. For Rosalind Sumner, Paul Wiley, Dee Lynham, and Jim Huber, I'm Tracy Wilson. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.